Welcome back. The Irish Kidney Association has launched their Gift of Life Christmas campaign, encouraging people to talk about donating this Christmas. With us to share her organ donation story is RT News broadcaster Vivian Trainer, And as well with her this morning is Mark Murphy, Chief Executive of the Irish Kidney Association. Good morning to you morning, both. Folks. Good morning, folks. And thank morning. you for joining us. Um, I think we might go straight to your story. And Mark, we'll talk to, talk to you about the importance of the whole campaign in a moment. But Vivian, tell us, because you gave literally the gift of life to your nephew a number of years ago now. Yeah, well, I suppose what I would say is I gave him a better quality of life. People say that um, donation and living donation, you save somebody's life. Uh, you don't save their life, but you give them a better quality of life um, as an alternative to being on dialysis, mm -hmm. which takes its toll on a person, is very restrictive um, in terms of their lifestyle, in terms of what they can eat and drink on a daily basis. So al always the aim would be to get somebody transplanted. So um, my nephew Martin was in his mid-20s when his kidneys failed, and he spent uh, quite a while on dialysis and we sort of thought that you know he, he could be waiting any length of time to get a kidney from a deceased donors list so that's when family members went forward to be tested mm -hmm. for suitability um, I ended up being chosen um, as the suitable donor and our our, don our donation took place in the UK actually okay. but our workup was done uh, here in, in Dublin by Bowman Hospital. So tell us about that conversation <laughs> conversation in, in terms mm -hmm. of the family when you said, well, look, we, he could be a long time waiting, so look, one of us is going to have to step up to the mark here. Mm -hmm. Was it a group decision in terms of, look, let's all go and get tested? Or how did that, no, it how simply you became it? known that um, he needed a kidney, that living donation was an option, mm. um, and people went forward individually for testing. Initially, everybody was rejected. I didn't even go forward in the initial uh, round of testing because I think I'd, I was either expecting my third child or had just had my third child. So I wasn't in the mix at all. But as time went on, um, and I had a little bit more time and a little bit more contact with Martin, my nephew, to see what he was going through. I then actually went in with him just to see his doctors, really as an advocate, as a patient advocate, and got to know more then about the living donation process. And that's when, because of certain complications that he had in his condition, we decided to look for a second opinion abroad where they, he would have been more suitable for transplant. Mm. So we went to Coventry in the UK um, on the recommendation of his doctors here. And that's where our transplant took place. My sister Gina and I uh, initially went forward at the, during that round of testing and uh, Gina was actually going to be the donor but at the last minute then I was chosen as the more suitable donor. And how did you feel about that Vivian? Because it is a huge thing isn't it? It is and it is, isn't um, and not to play it down because it's, it's different for everybody but for me <clears throat> it really did feel like just the very, a very practical solution. Um, I knew and had confidence in the process having seen the way uh, doctors, I, I knew that they wouldn't do it unless it was safe. Um, mm -hmm. You know doctors don't go in to a healthy patient and do something that they wouldn't see as yeah. being, you know, potentially a success. When it's a relative as well, and you see what they're going through, yeah. there isn't really that much to think about. When you no. have a kidney, you know you can survive on one. Um, it is quite matter of fact. Um, and that's not to play it down. It, it, it is a huge decision for many people. But for me personally, it didn't seem like a huge decision at the time. Mm -hmm. And how is he now? Great, doing really well. I mean, Good. that kidney lasted um, around the four year mark which was great to get to keep him off dialysis for that time. Unfortunately, his original condition returned and attacked the donor kidney. Um, so he did end up back on dialysis, but luckily only for a relatively short period of time. He then had a second transplant from a deceased donor uh, the second time around and is now doing really well. And the father of? Three children. Three children. <laughs> since the transplant. Brilliant. Yes. So he's yeah. doing great, which is yeah. lovely we to hear. Three a nice happy ending. Children. Yeah. Um, and but as you say, you're, uh, Vivian was telling us during the break, you, you don't know what, what's going to happen or what's around the corner. And he didn't know that that kidney would fail and he, he, he would need another one. Um, so it's about reacting to the situation, I suppose, when it happens, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, you, you take it literally uh, post transplant, you take it hour by hour, then you take it day by day. And you take it week by week. I do remember we celebrated when we got to the one year anniversary and really forgot about it after that. I, mm. I sort of took it for granted and did really, yeah. never really thought about it after that. But then the original condition returned, as I said, and uh, it looked like he was about to lose that kidney, which is devastating for him. Of course. Uh, mm. to know that he would have to go back on dialysis. But that's the look of the draw. And the important thing to remember in it is not to be disappointed about that because as his consultant pointed out to me, even those four years off dialysis meant it kept him healthy and kept him in a better position 
to be transplanted for a second time. So the longer you're off dialysis, the better. So that made it all worthwhile, whether it lasted a, a year, two years, three years, it still makes it all worthwhile for me. And Mark, um, we were chatting before we came on and we were talking about, uh, you know, we're, we are both donor card carriers, but you asked a very interesting question that, do your family know your wishes? And I don't, I don't think we do. And you said the key to the campaign is really about having that conversation with your family. And the reason at Christmas is, as you said, Vivian, is that this is when the family come together. So have that conversation. Yeah, our donor card, we ask you to sign the back of it. Mm. And we ask that you get your next of kin to sign the back of it. Mm. That is purely to get the conversation going with your next of kin. Mm. So that the donor card acts as a tool to make that conversation happen. Mm. So um, that conversation is actually more important than the donor card. There's no legal um, status to the donor card whatsoever. Yeah. It is the conversation that, and now we'd prefer to have a registry that mm -hmm. this could be put down. It still would not have a legal, uh, it's going to be the next of kin no matter what. Mm -hmm. um, no matter if they change the laws of the land, they're talking about presumed consent, it's going to come down to the family giving the yeah. nod yeah. and knowing your wishes. It's much easier if they know your wishes now. So that's why we need this conversation for them to make this decision. About one in 300, 200, 300 deaths in this country is a potential for organ donation. That's all. Yeah. But it could be, it could be your death if mm -hmm. you like. Yeah. And, and uh, but the conversation, the family, being aware makes it so much easier for them because it's a horrible time to ask someone to make a decision. Mm. And we're not great at having the chat, are we? Is we're not bad. Thing? Are we not bad? We're not getting bad. better, I think. Yeah, I we? think we're yeah. certainly improving. Yeah, yeah no, th we're not great at talking about death. No. Mm. No, or our death as such. We're not maybe not great at writing wills. But no, it's Ireland is good. Um, we're going to have one more... I'd, think we're going to have a record year for deceased organ donation this year. Mm -hmm. It's looking likely. Now, I don't want to put the hex on it. It's too yeah, close to the end of the year. Mm -hmm. But um, it's good. About over 300 people will receive the gift of life. I mean, um, certainly, as Vivian has said, um, transplantation extends your life greatly in comparison to staying on dialysis. Of course. So, yeah, yeah. So it's a... It's, uh, very important. That's that's the call. You're going to be there at Christmas. Have There's one conversation, the conversation you going. have, yeah. Get it going. even if it lasts for one while minute. You're, while you're fighting playing Monopoly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just Listen, thank you for coming in. Thank Tell you us guys. your story, Vivian. Appreciate that. Happy Christmas. Thank you.